Okay, so spinal cord topography. Now here, a picture is worth a, a lot of words, and here's the picture, okay? We descended from quadrupeds. So quadrupeds, uh, it's quite clear in a quadruped that the face and the front part of the ear is in front of the back of the ear, the neck, and the forelimbs, and then there's the this trunk area, and then there's the, uh, the front of the legs, and then there's the back of the legs and, and the perineum. And then there's, a, in some animals, there's a tail. So we stood up, but we still have this same organization. So that the cervical, the, the spinal cord is divided into cervical, thoracic, lumbar, sacral, and in other animals also coccygeal, but not in us. Um, so cervical, thoracic, lumbar, and sacral segments, and the organization of them is the same as in a quadruped. So if, if I'm standing here, it does not make sense that the lumbar segments that serve my legs are in front of the sacral segments that serve my saddle region, which is above that. But if I, st if I stood or if I got into this position, it would make sense. And that's how we evolved, so that's the way to remember it. Cervical is gonna, is gonna um, serve the back of the ears, the back of the head, the arms. Thoracic's gonna serve the trunk. Lumbar is gonna serve the front of the legs and the top of the feet. Sacral's gonna serve the, the bum, the perineum, the saddle region. Um, and the back of the legs and the bottoms of the feet. This front part, the front of the ears, the front of this, this these are called pinnas. Uh, so the front, the, the outside of this pinna, uh, plus the face, plus the oral cavity, that's all gonna be the department of the trigeminal nerve, which is a cranial nerve. So the spinal nerves is gonna be from the back of the ear backwards. Great. So. There are, uh, there are differences between what we do from a sensory point of view and what we do from a, uh, a motor point of view. Obviously, the back of the head has no motor. There's no muscle back here. We can't move any muscles. We can't even move our ears, um, not, not the way that a cat can. My cat can go boom, boom, can totally move their ears to, to orient to a sound. I can't do that. Um, some people can move their ears a tiny little bit by, I don't know, by doing jaw things, but it's not the same. Um, so we have no motor innervation here. We have a sensory innervation. So the, the segments are not completely aligned just because the sensory and motor apparatus are not the same at every part of the body. So what do, do the cervical, the cervical, um, uh, spinal cord, uh, from a sensory point of view, it's the back of the head, the neck, the shoulders, and, and the arms and the hands. From a motor point of view, it's most of the neck, shoulders, uh, and, and arms and hands. Um, from, a, in the thoracic, uh, spinal cord, what the, uh, the, there's motor out to the trunk muscles, and um, and there is sensory information coming from the skin, the trunk, but also from the internal viscera. We we get information from the viscera. It's not information that uh, that we do a lot of that we're very aware of. Oftentimes, sometimes we're completely unaware of it. Um, but in in any case, information, sensory information comes in from the viscera and comes into the into the thoracic spinal cord. The uh, lumbosacral, which we will group as a, as a group, the lumbosacral uh, region of the spinal cord uh, deals with the legs, the feet, and then as you get back into sacral uh, segments, it's, it includes the saddle area, the bladder, the colon, the, the um, bladder, colon, and, and the genitalia. So sensory information from, from all the pelvic floor organs. Uh, motor, 
information coming out of the sacral lumbosacral cord goes to the hips, the legs, the feet, uh, and, and that's it. Now, there's one more th uh, piece that comes out of the spinal cord. What, we talked, what we've talked about so far is sensory information going in, somatosensory information, that's all somatosensory information going in, and, and skill, s motor information going out, voluntary motor information going out of the spinal cord. So the final in and out piece or out piece is an autonomics. So preganglionic uh, motor neurons leave the spinal cord. And they leave it from, from about C8, from the bottom, the lower part of the cervical uh, spinal cord all the way back into the sacral cord. And uh, we'll, we'll get into this in, in a little bit, um, what, what types of uh, neurons these are. But most rostrally, at, at C8 and upper thoracic levels, what is being served is the eyes, the face, and the head. Uh, then it's, it's topographically organized so that the thoracic cord is going to provide autonomic outflow that serves the trunk and the viscera. And then down in the sacral cord, uh, there's going to be autonomic outflow to the bladder, the colon, and the genitalia. Okay, so, um, and this simply shows you uh, the, the, the organization in a standing person uh, uh, of the different roots. And so there are eight cervical roots, 12 thoracic roots, five lumbar roots, and um, uh, a few three to five sacral roots. So. One of the interesting things is that because of this quadrupedal uh, inheritance, what you have are discontinuities. So for example, here, C5, which comes across here and also down into the arms, is right next to T1. And then C6 through 8 are, are not abutting to, even though they're lower in spinal cord. So the, the organization of these um, dermatomes, the sensory information, the, the region of skin from which sensory information comes into each segment, this organization only makes sense uh, in, the, in terms of a quadruped. Now, remember that the sensory inputs and the motor outputs are different. Because, for example, the example that we already talked about was the back of the head. There is sensory input from the back of the head, but there's no motor, motor output there. Um, so this is called, the, these are the dermatomes of the segments, and there is an a, a accompanying concept of myotomes. What are the muscles that are subserved by every segment of the spinal cord? And I, I'm not going to go through those, and, and there's no easy way to illustrate those, but there are a few that are very important to keep in mind, and so I'm just going to um, list those here. The first one that's really important to keep in mind is breathing. Okay, we need to breathe and we use skeletal muscle to breathe. And the motor neurons that innervate the uh, diaphragm, which is responsible for, for normal breathing, um, they are called phrenic motor neurons and they sit in C3 through C5, so very, pretty high up in spinal cord. Now, if there's a spinal cord injury above C3, or in, in anywhere above C5, in fact, you might have a disruption of breathing because these motor neurons don't know what to do on their own. They get their information from the medulla. If that connection between the medulla and the um, phrenic motor neurons is cut, then a person will have problems breathing. Now, Bobby had an, a, a lesion above that, so his breathing was fine. But, um, for example, Christopher Reeve had um, a, a, a high cervical lesion that uh, made it uh, necessary for him to have uh, re respiratory assistance. Um, okay, so that's a, that's a really critical um, place to, to know. You, you, you pretty much have to memorize that the phrenic motor neurons are in C3 to C5. For hand dexterity, this is C to C6 to C8, so, um, and that matches 
uh, that largely matches the sensory innervation of, of the hand as well. And foot dexterity is L5 through S2. What we're gonna do in the next video is we're gonna look at the tail end of the spinal cord, which has a particular um, appearance.